Did you pack your parka and your snow boots? Good, because we are going up into the mountains of the Alola region before heading up into the Arctic to find out what real life animal is like a Pokemon. But first, before we do, if you're new here and you wanna learn more about animals and pop culture, like real life Pokemon, or just animals in general, be sure to hit that subscribe button and make that bell go ding so you can be the first to see all the new content headed your way. Now, let's get started. Vulpix, the fox Pokemon, was originally introduced in the very first games as a fire type. The Alolan form was of course introduced to us when we went to Alola in Pokemon Sun and Moon. It then became an ice type. It appears that in Alola, Vulpix has adapted to its surroundings of preferring to live in the snowy mountains of Alola. It's believed that Alolan Vulpix actually came to the islands at the same time as humans, but they preferred their own company, so they moved up into the mountains to avoid other Pokemon. Apparently, groups of Alolan Vulpix are known as Skulks, and they are protected and led by Alolan Ninetales. Alolan Vulpixes are really well adapted to life in the cold. However, when they're in warmer climates, they can use their tail to produce ice that will then lower the temperature around them. One thing that I love about the Pokemon game developers is that they really do their research, especially when it comes to the Pokedex entries. Like the Pokedex entry for Alolan Vulpix, it states that elderly people of Alola referred to it by an older name, Keo Keo, which coincidentally enough is a Hawaiian word and also an endemic Hawaiian hibiscus flower, which goes by the name Kokio Keo Keo. The word Keo Keo means white in Hawaiian. So it's a nice nod to the region of our world, which gave inspiration to Alola. And if you're a fan of the anime, you know that Ash's classmate, Lily, does in fact have an Alolan Vulpix by the name of Snowy, who often tags along outside of her Pokeball with the gang on their adventures. Should come as no surprise that I'll be choosing a fox to compare Vulpix to, as the name Vulpix actually comes from the scientific word Vulpez. Vulpez is the scientific classification, the genus, of the animals that are known as true foxes. And what better fox to look at than the Arctic fox? As their name suggests, they live up in the north in the Arctic. And there's plenty of similarities between Arctic foxes and Alolan vulpixes. As we saw, a group of Alolan vulpixes is called a skulk. Guess what a group of Arctic foxes is called? A skulk. And the Arctic fox can survive temperatures in the Arctic as low as negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit. Sound familiar? That's how cold an Alolan Vulpix's breath is. Obviously, both the Arctic fox and Alolan Vulpix have great camouflage for their life in the snowy climates. White fur allows them to blend into their environment and sneak up on prey. However, the Arctic Fox does in fact change its coat color because it's not always winter in parts of the Arctic. In the summertime, the tundra becomes brown in color. And so the Fox's coat changes with it. So that way they don't stand out and get easily picked off by predators. Arctic Foxes aren't just cute. They're clever as well. In the winter, prey can become scarce. And so they follow around my next favorite animal after the cheetah, the polar bear. Yeah, I got a lot of polar bear decorations up because, uh, you know, Christmas and Christmas means time for polar bear. Actually, I probably have polar bear decorations up around the house all year round. But why would they follow one around? Well, if the polar bear has a successful hunt, they'll try to get whatever scraps they can. Another striking feature of the Alolan Vulpix and Arctic Fox is their tail. Well, tails for Vulpix. Because <laughs> they got a lot of them. The Arctic Fox has a thick tail to not only help with their balance, but cover up when it's quite cold. 
the Alolan Vulpix, well, they have quite a few tails, and they're more wispy in nature, which maybe is a reference to the Arctic fox's fluffy tail. Who knows? Hmm. Arctic foxes, like Alolan Vulpixes, are really well adapted to their environment. Compared to other foxes, the Arctic fox has smaller ears and a shorter muzzle. Compared to, say, something like the fennec fox, which lives in warmer, hotter climates, that has bigger extremities, those big ears that help with cooling off. And even though fennec foxes are the smallest fox species, their ears can be half the size of their own bodies. But why is that? Well, that leads us to Bergman's and Allen's rules, which the Arctic fox and fennec fox are great examples of. Bergman's rule is all about body size. In colder climates, body size is a bit bigger, whereas in warmer climates, a bit smaller, where Allen's rule is about the appendage size. It's so like ears and nose. In colder climates, they would be much more compact than in warmer environments. These rules suggest in colder climates where one needs to retain heat, bodies are larger, but more compact with the appendages. In contrast, in warmer climates, where you need to expel heat to cool yourself off, bodies are smaller and more linear. And we can see this with the Arctic fox and fennec fox. Fennec fox has the larger appendages and the smaller body size. Whereas the Arctic fox, in comparison, is bigger, but their appendages are smaller. As Ninetales is my favorite Pokemon, you can bet your bottom dollar we'll be returning to Vulpix and Ninetales in the future. So if you don't want to miss out, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I also want to give a shout out to the amazing Nantwich Pokemon Go raid group. They have been fantastic in not just helping me get some really cool legendary raids in, but also sharing their pictures, which I used in the video. I encourage you, if you play Pokemon Go, but aren't yet in a community group, find one. It makes playing the game so much more fun. And you get to meet some new friends as well. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite Pokemon is from Alola. And give a thumbs up if you learned something new. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next Friday. Bye!